Hello, everyone, and welcome to REMAX University's Agent Voice webinar. The purpose of this weekly webinar is to provide a connection place for the best agents from around the world and provide a forum for tools and ideas that are being used successfully in navigating through today's real estate landscape. Today, we are honored to have Karan Stokes of the Resource Group of REMAX leaders here in Centennial, Colorado. Kay Stokes, are you here? I'm here. How are we doing, Amy? I think we're doing great. Um, really looking forward to today's uh, event. We are um, obviously you and I are both having incredible conversations with people, you know, our peers, agents from around the world talking about how they are best navigating uh, in today's landscape. And, you know, we've had webinars all week going from uh, broker focused webinars to technology focused webinars, coaching webinars. And this one, I think probably most pertinent, most important because this is agent voices agents talking to agents about what they are really experiencing in the marketplace today and being able to share tools and resources and best practices ideas that are working today well i'm excited that uh you asked me to be part of this I, i'll be honest with you amy we um we're going to spend some time talking today a little about some key concepts that we've been talking about in the market and feedback that we've been getting but i'm really excited to see where this series goes with some of the dynamic speakers and um also just regular agents Yes. that are on the street. And uh, I just want to say thank you to you um, and Adam and Nick and the, the entire leadership for being in tune with the fact that still the best ideas in this, in this company come from the field and they come you from bet. us. And uh, that's what we're going to try to focus on, which uh, I'm excited about. So I appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to let you take it from here. I'm really excited to have you hosting these this series because, again, the credibility and the you know bumping elbows. You you know you've got closings already set up for this week. What's going to happen with those, those pendings, those closings, working with um, virtual showings, all of the the things that agents are dealing with today. And again, the the credibility of you talking to uh, your agent peers, team leader peers about what's working today. So I'm going to let you take it away. Have fun, Kay. Fantastic. Well, I appreciate it. Um, it's awesome watching already here in the column, all the people that are doing, uh, that are using the chat field. I'll be honest with you. Um, if you know me, I am always moving and have a lot of thoughts going through my head. So I'm going to be glancing back and forth to this, uh, to this chat field while you guys are communicating. Make sure also while you're using this side thing, we're agents, people. Make sure that you're leaving your information, even your uh, Instagram handles, uh, how you can connect with each other because these are ref for referral partners when this market gets cranked up again and you can be doing business, make it easier. Um, the other thing is, is if you're going to leave me a chat or ask a question, feel free to put two asterisks like, or, or symbols and then put my name and the question and that way it doesn't get lost in the shuffle here. But hello to everybody out there. I'm excited. So when Remax International came to me and asked me to um, participate in this, um, I'll be honest with you, I didn't know why, and I was humbled that they chose me, but I can tell you why I chose to serve in this capacity with you guys on the series. Um, the why is because I've walked a unique journey, and for many of you, I know you personally, we've known each other for over 20 years, but I came into this industry not through real estate on the transactional side. I came through REMAX headquarters, and at REMAX headquarters, I served as an officer of the company. I also was fortunate to be um, like so many of the leadership now, mentored by the founder who's still a mentor today. And um, at the end of the day, before I started my transactional business about seven years ago where I was transacting, um, it really came down to the fact that agents are the number one weapon in real estate. They are. And there's so many things that because of who we are as people, um, we do. But the entire REMAX organization and, and real estate as a whole, as we're seeing demonstrated right now, does not function without the agent. And uh, I can tell you that for years, there's been things in the market that we've been seeing coming. We've been talking about, we've been predicting, and a lot of speakers in the industry have been talking about. And candidly, we're a little stubborn, aren't we? And we don't adopt those best practices until we have to. But I think we would all agree that right now, we are in a have to moment. So this series is gonna be more of a relay race. And what I mean by that is you hear that adage, it's a marathon, so it's not a sprint, so take your time. Really, I think real estate moving forward for the next several weeks is gonna be a relay race. And it's gonna be important for us to hand off that baton of knowledge rapidly and quickly to one another. And that's what our goal is gonna be. Um, we are going to toss that information back and forth, creating some different ways, not only through this conference call, but outside of it, um, for you to hear best practices and go implement. I will tell you right now, 
I've never seen more chats, virtual cocktails, hangouts. Um, I've never seen more going on in the, the real estate community than I am right now. The problem is, is sometimes we get stuck in this place of analysis where we've got so many great lists that, that we're working on that at the end of this, we don't come out any better. We just have a bunch of lists. So you're always going to hear us point you back to implementation, taking small bites, figuring out what it is that you can actually do uh, in the marketplace that is going to be effective. So I'm going to continue to keep an eye out here on these chat screens, but we're going to dig in in a couple different places first. You guys good with that? All right, here's what I want to do. If you're trying to communicate with me on social media, you can do it on Twitter or on, uh, on Facebook or on Twitter, on Instagram or Twitter, uh, at Karan Stokes, or you can go to the Facebook page. The other thing is, is just this morning, I set up a Facebook group uh, and you can find it on Facebook, you can join it. It's just called Agent Next 2020. It's been in the works anyway, because as a speaker, I was planning on being out in a lot of your offices here this year. Um, we'll see where that goes, but I really wanna use that as a conduit so that we can put implementation in place. Now remember, this is cross-brand. There's a lot of people outside of our network that are doing some cool things. And so that's what it's gonna serve as, is a place just to dump great information and thoughts uh, and things that are going on that people are actually implementing so check that out so here's where we're going to start i want to look at a couple different presentations that i've done over the years because i want to set the stage for who is this person and why is he talking to me i will tell you this when i was working at remax international as a regional vice president the market collapse that we experienced was unlike anything i've ever seen and i do want to set the stage to say that perspective is so important right now and i'll tell you why it's it's important there are some of you right now that are closing, closing transactions. Um, I'll be honest with you, I closed the transaction on Monday and there's a lot of different nuances of closing the transaction, including issues we were having with wires. Uh, it was also at the same time when we were seeing some lenders going out of business. And I'll talk about that a little bit later in the market snapshot. Um, but it, was, it took me all day to close a file or settlement as some of you in other places of the country call it. It, it took me all day to close that based on technology and the things that I had to do different and operate in. But perspective is important. There are people of you, right, there are those of you right now that are closing a lot of business and you're doing a lot of things that are great. But there are other people that are on this, this uh, meeting right now and you're a little freaked out about what your cash flow looks like for the next 30 days. Those are real things. And as agents, we need to know where we can actually turn to have those resources and what other people are doing. So I wanna respect the fact that this is not all sunshine and all positive thinking. Sometimes we just have to decide that we are going to win. And that's what I wanna give you as kind of our first tip that we're gonna focus on today is deciding to win. It's not just um, the concept of I'm in the game and I can be successful. It's making the decision to be successful. And sometimes that means eliminating some of the things that you've gotta look at around you that aren't contributing to your success focusing your energy you know i coach little league baseball and when i coach these these little guys uh one of the funniest things is is at certain age they're swinging at everything it reminds me a lot of like real estate right when i started in my business i was swinging at everything i was taking every client every lead anything that was coming in and i wasn't doing it well. what you have to teach these little guys and what you have to teach people in baseball is not can you hit the ball it's what balls not to hit it's the strategy of standing in the box and looking at the pitcher and understanding as the ball comes, you should be thinking on every pitch because it's a split second decision that you're gonna hit that ball. And it's easier to make a decision not to hit it than it is to go through the process of hitting it. That's why I want us to reset our mindset a little bit and look at the market and the economy right now. What is it that you are not going to do right now? What are the things on your list that for the foreseeable future, from these web calls and all these great ideas that you're picking up, what are the things in the foreseeable future that you may not be able to execute? That's what I want you guys to think about, okay? So let, let me take a look at a couple of these questions here and then we'll, uh, we'll get into these questions here in just a little bit. But I wanna go into specifically a presentation I did in 2015. And why this is important, let me share my screen with you real quick. All right. So why this is important is because in 2015, I went out and did a speaking tour called Realtor 2020. And I want you to see a copy of it. In this copy, we talked about how the market was shifting and changing. All right. 
and how it was shifting and changing became really, really important because uh, honestly, we don't do well with change. And as I started to look at the market and as we started to put some of these predictors out there, what I noticed is the market was accelerating faster than we thought it would, would accelerate. So I wanna go specifically to a couple different slides for you guys to take a look at. First slide I wanna stop at is this one. What was different in 2015 that we were looking at moving forward? And I want to ask you, in five years, has this changed? Has this changed? No, it hasn't. In fact, five years ago, we knew that the global markets were gonna matter more than ever before. We knew that brand promise, what you stand behind was more than your brand name. In fact, brand name, the power of the Remax organization is only upheld by what you guys are doing actively on the street. Five years ago, we knew that fads are acceptable. Case in point, why did everybody go after toilet paper? I still don't get it. With, with, with the coronavirus, I don't get it. I'll be honest with you. Like this is not a virus that attacks your digestive system. I'm not making light of it, but honestly, the fad of what people were going after and what they were hoarding created this fanatical panic in the marketplace. And fortunately that started to subside, but also trends are valuable and the individual is more important than the industry. And I think more than, more than ever, right now we have a unique opportunity to, to actually change the game in what people are experiencing in the marketplace as agents, all right? Now here's the other part of the presentation that I want to uh, share with you here. Sorry, I've got like a number of these windows that are open. Bear with me. All right. So here's a, here's a couple other things that I want to be able to share with you. When we look at where the market has gone, it accelerated in 2000, from 2015 to 2018 faster than ever before. Um, in fact, what it did is it forced us to start to change this concept of what the, what's important to the agent um, and what's important to the consumer and the consumer's buying power. It forced us to change it right away. Now, I will tell you this, um, as agents, we have to be smart enough to focus on our business, but we have, to be, we have to have empathy as well and focus beyond the business and what's actually going on in the community. The consumer buying patterns of being virtual and online and all those different types of things that we saw in the marketplace and how that shifted, what it ended up doing is it ended up changing how we could do real estate. Now, you know this, it feels intuitive, but at the time it was revolutionary. People didn't understand why and how the consumer was changing because all we thought about was real estate. All we thought about was unlocking the door. You know, Nick said it at R4. He said, the consumer behavior has changed. It is now consumer, house, then they think about the agent. Well, now we actually have the advantage in the marketplace to be able to do that by creating information and putting things out there that are going to be helpful to them. But I can tell you right now, one of the things that we need to be paying attention to specifically is as the consumer pattern has changed, we can't keep ourselves out of the framework of the fact that we are consumers. What do I mean by that? Well, we always talk about the consumer like it's, it's a mythical person, but we are consumers. We are actually the ones out there buying and selling products and goods and services. So how do we expect to be dealt with? Well, right now, the consumer in the real estate industry is on pause, and I think we can all agree with that. How many of you guys have had clients recently that have said, hey, we're going to put things on hold. Or, you know what, we're not sure whether we should list the house. Well, here's a tip for you. What are you reading? Because what you're reading and what you're putting into your brain right now is going to be how you answer that question. It's not as simple as, yeah, this seems like a good time. Real estate is all local and it's all about what your client needs. So for your, for your customers that have properties that have been already under great demand in the marketplace, why would you look at them and tell them this is a, a bad time for them to list their home? I think what we can be telling them is be honest with them. You know, right now, buyer traffic is going down, but there are buyers that are still interested in your property. So if we list your home, here are some things that we can do to ensure your safety and also to make sure that we minimize the inconvenience that you have being displaced and not having any place to go while we're showing. What are those tools? How are you taking that information? Well, here's, here's a tip. We live in an algorithm society. Facebook, social media, 
even you're even if you don't do social media but you're on google and you're going through different articles and you're looking at different um commentary we are in an algorithm society and unfortunately you're going to be fed more of what you like you're sitting at the biggest buffet of information and in that big buffet of information you are going to have to go out there and make the decision to depart from some of the things that you used to spend your time looking at and if you're looking at information and you're part of forums where people are being negative guess what all your news feeds are going to be full of negativity so when you get on the phone with that customer or that client who's got a question that's exactly what you're going to feel and that's exactly what you're going to express if you're going on some of these forums where you're talking to people that are doing innovative things doing virtual showings doing um virtual conference calls for listing appointments then that is the way that you're going to think and you're going to deploy it in the marketplace so the second thing i would tell you is beyond just deciding to win you need to cut out the negative channels in your life you have full control as you're sitting there at home or as you're out in the marketplace to bring yourself information like this of things that you can actually implement so let's talk about what's going on in the street now i do see here in a couple of the comments people are looking for the uh the facebook group so we will make sure that we provide you guys with a link at the end of this so that you don't have to keep searching for it and we'll post this um uh, uh, ru is going to post this out there but we'll make sure we give you guys a link as well to get to the facebook group um that was set up okay sound good all right so what's in the news well let's talk about it some of the things that we see in the news right now we may not understand so let's talk about interest rates for those of you that don't understand where interest rates have been going um, I've had a lot of conversations with uh, banking executives and what we decided to do is that we would kind of unpack for you a little bit of what's going on with interest rates so that you can have talking points to actually talk to your customers about. And trust me, we've said this to our clients and now they understand it. So when you're walking into a buyer's consult or you're doing a buyer's consult, consult uh, over, over Zoom um, or in person like I just did earlier this week, a couple of things that we're doing to tell them specifically what they need to know is mr mrs mr Con mr or mrs consumer um interest rates are volatile right now they're volatile for a couple of reasons when this market started to move interest rates in the 10-year bond changed they went down and we saw interest rates go to historic lows 2.75 three percent interest rates some of those interest rates are still available depending on the loan product that you're looking at for instance in a va loan but for your situation, one of the things we need to consider as we're shopping is that interest rates became volatile because when the market began to fall last week, all of the lenders and banking institutions were facing margin calls. Those margin calls means that they had to put cash on deposit against the loans that they had out there. Now, again, that is something that a client can understand. Being able to put that behind why as you go out shopping now for a home that interest rate may not be one that they're interested in locking right away but we trust the lenders that we've provided for you and those lenders are very skilled at what they do and we're going to stay in we're going to stay connected with them so that you understand the entire time while we're shopping what your buying power is that's going to make a, a buyer feel better at the beginning of the transaction why is it going to help them feel better at the beginning of the transaction because you're managing expectations and folks in crisis i can tell you this managing expectations is everything for our consumer and you shouldn't just be working on your business today but you should be setting the pace for the consumer in the long haul because i'll tell you this we are a lagging indicator in the economy real estate has always been one that will lead us out of this market but one that we probably haven't felt the severity of its effects still here for a little bit. So what can we do to bridge that gap and keep our consumer engaged? Be a trusted advisor for them right now in how you consult them on buying. So what's happened is because of what's happened in the financial conditions and those margin calls, what it's allowed the lender to do is the a lender has been able to keep interest rates lower, but the cost of the lending is higher. And so we do believe that that's going to balance out as we kind of return back to normal. But it's important for us to have even that much information and that much insight as we go forward so that we can um, advise our buyers. What else did we see out there? Well, 
Let's talk about it. Let's put it out there. That big, scary, ugly monster under the bed, the eye buyers, right? Um, I love talking about this right now. Every major eye buyer that was in the marketplace has taken this opportunity to stop buying homes. Now, there's a lot of different reasons that they give, and I believe some of those reasons are merited, including consumer safety, but the reality of it is, is it's risk. They are mitigating and managing their risk. And if, if as agents, you don't realize that the eye buyers have exposed part of the market that typically we reserve for investors, there are tens of thousands of people around the United States right now that up until the past couple of weeks were raising their hands, asking for their homes to be bought out. And for some of you that don't know what an iBuyer is or it's not in your marketplace, it is companies like Open Door and Zillow, Redfin that were participating where the consumer could sell direct to them. All right. But that was always an investor. We've always had that model in real estate. Typically, though, that investor would come through us as agents or connect with the consumer directly. Well, tens of thousands of people have raised their hands around the country saying, I want you to directly buy my house. That option has been eliminated in the short term in this marketplace. But let me ask you this question. How are you getting to them? How are you taking advantage of this huge gap in the marketplace that a year ago at this time we were trying to combat, but currently we actually have the opportunity to slide in through social media channels, through direct marketing, retargeting, and get to that consumer? Or are you doing YouTube where you're talking specifically to that iBuyer? Guess what? Your options are off the table. Here's an article where Zillow has stopped buying homes in the short term. But guess what? I can still be a solution for you. Right, is that video out? Are you producing that? If you're not, you should be working on that this afternoon. Get out of your jammies. Wake up every single day. Get ready to go to work. Treat it like the business that you were working in before you were shut in. And there are opportunities all over the place. And the iBuyer, uh, the iBuyer void is a big place for us to be able to fill. Let's also talk about this. What really does a discount brokerage have to offer right now? Very little. We know from that standpoint, the volume of business that we need to do right now to build and grow is enormous. We have to be working in our business every single day. For some of you, you've got to be investing in technology to be working remotely from home. So recouping those things, the market has pivoted and it's given us a great opportunity to get in front of it and demonstrate value. Because ultimately, you shouldn't be working on your business to survive right now. You should be working on your business so it's better on your business, not in your business, on your business so it's better down the road, okay? Um, and here's the last thing that I'm going to tell you. And then I'm going to go through and look at some of these questions and get some questions answered for you. This sounds harsh, but it's true. And I want to give you a different paradigm to think about right now. You've heard the adage, lead, follow, or get out of the way. Everyone is not a leader right now. In fact, if everyone is trying to be a leader, we're going to fail. There are times for people that have unique gifts to lead and to provide leadership. And there are times for us to have the humility and self-reflection to know right now I need to follow. And when it comes to keeping our consumers safe and making sure that our families and our community are safe and protecting those that are exposed, it's time for us to follow those things. Now here's the challenge. There are some of you that should be leading. There are some of you that we're gonna call on throughout this series to join us in leading and providing turnkey solutions for people so that they can get engaged and get involved. Leaders can't bury their heads, but at the same time, you can't lead if no one is willing to follow. And so this has got to be a conversation. And in your communities and in your business and in your brokerage, please help your broker owners out as well. You need to have that humility to say, I am willing to follow. I'm willing to lighten the load for you so that our brokerage emerges uh, more successful. I'm willing to help be a recruiting voice because I miss being in the office and having your counsel right down the hallway. But this truly is a time to either lead, follow, 
or get out of the way. And guess what? The Remax system is uniquely designed that it only works when it all comes together. So I want to go to a couple of these questions real quick and take a look. Um, and some of these questions, guys, I don't know, but I guess what? I guarantee you by the time we talk next week, I may have answers for you. More importantly, I know that Amy and her team that's working hard, I know they're going to go out and find other agents that are answering these questions, but I will do my best right now. So give me a little grace as I read through these. Um, this is from Jennifer uh, Gilbert Smith. I'm in Washington state where real estate isn't an essential business. We're concerned about the ability to close our pending sales when we need to stay at home, especially since we've been warned our stay at home order may last longer. Jennifer, this is a scary question. Um, and I know it evokes a lot of fear for agents in other communities like yours, where you guys cannot be out transacting business. I will tell you that there are a lot of title companies and mortgage companies that are trying to solve the problem of how do we do virtual closings. But right now you're shut down. Here's what I would advise you to do. It's impossible to focus on building your business and find solutions if you're dealing with and plagued with the fear of cash flow and closings. There are things that we cannot control in this market, in this economy. And I know that there's our, there are relief programs that are out there, but ultimately what your question is, if you're not an essential business, what do you do? Here's what I would suggest you do. Start thinking about innovative ways and start talking about as, agent, as agents, innovative ways that you can solve this problem and go out there and fail at it. Don't just sit around and talk about it, try it. Get yourself in a little bit of trouble. Create a little bit of buzz and a little bit of um, pain in the marketplace because you're showing that as agents, you guys are trying to demonstrate a value and you're trying to experiment with some things. Even if those experiments fail, even if those experiments are what some people would deem um, out of sorts, try it. Because if you try it with other agents, they will, we will ultimately get to a solution. Here's the next question. Uh, is Redfin laying off employees? We've heard Zillow is backing out of contracts one day before closing. Um, I've read a lot of different articles about this. Um, I will tell you this, there are a couple I buyers that have canceled contracts mid contract in the past week. Zillow is not one of them that I've heard of. Um, I think that the Redfin layoffs, um, that might be confused with the Compass layoffs. Compass actually has been laying off employees at their corporate headquarters. And candidly, depending on how long this lasts, depending on the, the company, um, they're gonna make strategic decisions that try to help them survive. We're an agent-centric company. Our marching orders don't come from above. Our marching orders come from our own motivation um, and what we do as agents. That's what this is for. It's for us to pass those things along so that we can stay motivated out there. Remax is flying air cover for us. They are our Air Force. They, uh, they're, they're watching the skies, but ultimately we're the Marines on the field and we get the job done. All right, another question here. Let's see, can you handle the situation where we are in PA? The governor has ordered that we're not allowed to show homes in person, meet anyone in person for listings, et cetera. What I've been telling people is to greet, get prepped, do paperwork, get it all signed and be ready to go when it breaks and back to work. Any insights on our situation? Rob, great to talk to you, man. Um, I know you guys are doing well. Love seeing it on Facebook and how the family's doing. Um, yes, in Pennsylvania, here would be some of my suggestions on doing that and having conference calls with, with other markets on that. A, um, this is a great time for you to build uh, close relationships with listing agents and with buyer's agents. So the language that you can start using when you're marketing your properties is contact me directly so that we can set your virtual or schedule your private virtual showing. The other thing is do a Zoom conference call or do a webinar with your buyers or your, se or your, your sellers that have to be on the market or have those needs right now. Get on the phone with them and put it in your listing agreement that actually as a value add, you're going to teach them how to use video conferencing or FaceTime and um, go on eBay and buy an old iPhone and get it activated or a couple of them. Uh, get it activated and at least with Wi-Fi and give it to your clients uh, when you get listing agreements signed, drop it off at their house uh, and then set up virtual windows with them that they're willing to give their own home tour. Yes, it sounds odd, but guess what? Who's gonna sell a house better than the homeowner? And it's not a travesty if the buyer and seller actually connect personally. So there's a couple different ideas on that. Uh, you brought up another point as far as getting things signed. Just because we cannot be out in the streets in certain uh, communities, in Colorado, that's not the case. In Colorado, 
we are considered essential services, so we're at, actually out able to do, be in the community. But with all of us seeing things slow down a little bit, it doesn't mean that we can't sign listing agreements. In fact, those should be what you're doing right now. Get your listing agreement signed. Um, use DocuSign, use CTME, use DotLoop, whatever it is, but get all the paperwork done. Then as a thank you gift, not that we wanna spend our way out of this, but guess what? If you're already a Buffiniite and you're doing Popeyes, as a thank you gift, go on Amazon and start shooting out or go on Home Depot and start emailing out uh, gift cards for people to start ordering things to do, to, to tend to their house online. It's a great way for you to communicate with them, give them a thank you and get them prepared so that when the market returns, we're back on it. Okay, uh, somebody asked what a margin call is. I'll just explain that again. Margin call is when, in any situation, when what you've got lent out um, in loans, there's a, a reserve that you have to keep as a lender behind that that has to be in cash. And when those aren't being bought back as quickly by the market or consumed, they'll do a margin call where you have to do a cash deposit to back up those loans because they have to be in balance. All right, here's a question. All iBuyers are not asleep. I received this calling, call here in Northern Virginia, just an FYI. Jay, great insight, you're right, they're not all asleep. And I think anytime we talk in full generalities saying that it's all shut down, um, that, that we, we risk things. Let me make sure that we're, we're clear on something though. The most formidable iBuyers out there with the largest share of voice in iBuyer platforms and where the consumer's most trusted resource has been to get their homes purchased, they're out of business. And that leaves a huge gap in the market for us to be able to fill, but that's a great insight. All right, here's another video. Um, uh, yes, you can share these things. These are actually going to be um, archived with, uh, with RU. I'll let Amy talk about that when she comes back to us here in just a couple minutes. And they'll also be on YouTube. You can put them out there. But um, we'll also kind of cut these up and on the community group on Facebook and some other places, we'll make sure that those resources are easily accessible for you. All right, uh, Chris Wheeler, how do you approach recruitment of agents during this time? How would you advise them? This is awesome. I'll put this out there to agents because I would love for you to chime in. Do you want to be recruited right now? No. But are you looking for value? Yes. I was on an amazing recruiting conference call uh, yesterday. It was actually a hundred of us, uh, top producers around the country, uh, on a conference call across brands, talking about things and, and, my, and uh, masterminding together. And I actually sat back on that conference call and thought, you know what? What I need to do is when I'm done with this conference call, I need to reach back out to these people, connect with them through a social media. And as we, uh, and as we connect, I need to recruit them. This is a great recruiting tool. Using a Zoom conference to check on, in on people is a great recruiting tool. So here's what I would tell you, whether you're recruiting or you're um, prospecting, you should come up with a template email that's very simple. Hey, wanted to check in on you. Is there a time that we could do a quick conference call just to talk to each other face to face? Simple, all right? When you get on the phone, you're not pitching them in real estate to get the listing or the buyer. You need to be just checking in on them but use video to do that. When you're recruiting, be candid about it. And I don't wanna pivot this entirely to recruiting, but I do wanna answer your question, question uh, Chris. The way I would do it is I would simply say this, hey, as you're sitting at your home working on your business right now, I really want you to think about the things that are supporting you to get through this. And if you ever need any support or questions, I'm here for you. And more importantly, when we emerge from this, I want your business to be stronger. So I'm not too proud to ask you to join our office because I think I've got the tools as I'm demonstrating right now to get you to the next, uh, next step. All right, next question. Uh, we've been warned that there may be consequences to us, to our firm or clients if we leave the house to conduct business. Such a great, uh, such as get keys out of key boxes for our buyer, even if we've seen the client. So we aren't really able to be creative. What should we do then? Jennifer, great, great follow-up question. Here's what I tell you, focus on your existing business right now. And in fact, start connecting with, with uh, other social media groups in your area and find out what they're doing. On my conference call yesterday with my mastermind group, one of the agents out of Austin was actually saying that um, in their listing agreements, they are putting language in there that says that the seller is allowing buyers to see the property with them home unaccompanied by an agent. And so that's their way to get around it is they're allowing people to connect. Again, don't break state and local laws. But again, we're working at the, the um, pleasure of our clients um, and at the directive of our clients. And we need to be creative in solutions that we find. Another question, 
What are you reading, watching, listening to, and keeping positive and staying innovative? Um, great question, uh, Uzma. It's uh, good to see you on here. So here's what I read. I am not one of those people that runs from the news. I actually read the news um, because even within the news, all the negativity that's going on there, I'm looking for facts. Jared James said a great thing the other day. He said, look for facts, not fear, right? Fear, not facts, uh, is what we, we drive our lives with. And he said, look for facts, not fear. I look for the facts and things. So I go in there and I detail out what are the statistics. And then I go through and I don't just take the number. I take the number and I look at the percentage of the number because that helps me understand what is uh, and how is that affecting me as far as percentage. Um, the other thing that I do is I spend a lot of time on podcasts and I spend a lot of time on conference calls, one-on-ones and masterminds with other agents in the marketplace. Um, I'm a, 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 a avid, avid reader. So I've gone back and I've read a couple different books. Again, one of those books is Grit. It's a great book by Angela Duckworth and it talks about the fortitude you need to get through things like this. Um, I've even gone back and reviewed some of the stuff as a corporate officer uh, that I used to look at with uh, when I was at Remax International. I pulled notes out the other day that I had um, in my files and my archives in looking at the market in 2007 and, um, and in 2006. And I started to review what those things were that Dave Linegar was telling agents to do as we would go on these speaking tours around the country. And they haven't changed. They haven't changed. So some of the things to keep me positive and motivated is to go back to those things. Now, we're going to have more time on our next conference call to get into a lot of these uh, other questions. But I do want to close with this because I think it's very important for you guys to understand what makes us unique and different as a system. And for those of you that aren't with the REMAX system, um, you need to understand this as well. I was looking at those notes a couple weeks ago. Uh, or a couple days ago, and they were from 2006 at an officer retreat. I was looking at the notes and they specifically said we had 71,000 agents worldwide. We're over 124,000 agents I know and growing around the world. And I thought about a, a story that we used to tell all the time in the organization. Now, just knowing going from 70,000 to what we are now, it'd be naive to think that everybody in the REMAX system knows more than just the balloon and the power of the brand behind them. So as an agent, I wanna share this story with you. There's a story that Dave Linegar used to tell all the time about one log makes a lousy fire. And he's sitting around a, camp, a, a campfire with some of the regional owners at the time in the early stages of Remax. And true to form, like we always do, trust me, I've seen the cocktails. They're having drinks and it's getting late in the night. And the regional owner of California at the time looks over at Dave as he throws a as they're out camping, he throws a wine bottle on the fire and they're watching him blow up and crack. And he says, Dave, you know, one log makes a lousy fire. Dave looks over at him and says, what do you mean? He goes on to tell him, well, if you take a match and you put it next to a log, right? It's really hard to light. If you take a little bit of kindling and you light a fire and then you put one branch on, one branch on and more and more and more and you put logs on top of it all the combined power of those logs makes a huge brilliant fire and it creates warmth vibrance light that story was used for years as the essence of the remax brand and the power of agents in the marketplace and i'm seeing that come to life right now through every single one of you each one of us even through the fear of change and the inability to be creative we have an entire network of people around the world, people that are watching right now from places throughout the world. And that network will always be our greatest strength. The reason why is we've got hundreds of thousands of people that are committed to their own livelihood. They're committed to their own dreams. They're determined to be part of rewriting their own history and this chapter of history and they are out implementing and working and if we have more ways like this to connect to those people even when we're failing somebody out there succeeding and the power of that together makes a brilliant brilliant fire so i would say this each one of us in our news feeds in our emails in our business practices in the, the communication that we're putting out there to our community in ways where we connect the dots with restaurants and business services. Each one of us as agents are the strength of the brand. We are the logs that make that incredible fire. So please 
week after week, the next six weeks, commit to coming back here at noon on the Eastern, uh, out East, but 10 o'clock here in Mountain Standard Time or whatever time you tuned in, make the commitment to come back here and refill your bucket and connect as we bring on top speakers from around the country that are agents out practicing business. I want to do a couple thank yous though. Tom Maynard, Ashley LaRoque, Greg Krausen, Ashley Flowers, um, Ashley Rosa, these are all people at RU that are working around the clock to bring you this content. Please share them some love on social media, thank them, send them messages, send them hand notes uh, via mail, whatever it is, because they are tirelessly trying to connect the dots between all of us. Um, Amy, thanks for your leadership in this. I'm gonna have you come back. But next week, we're gonna have Michael Thorne on. We're gonna be talking about video and we're gonna get into it. We're not gonna be talking about the what so much. We're gonna be talking about the things we wanna know. How do you actually do it? Why do you actually do it? And more importantly, who do I need to connect with to do it better? Hope this was a value to you guys. Welcome back, Amy. Hey Stokes, uh, blowing my mind as always. Thank you so much for being such an incredible mentor, uh, providing motivation, inspiration, but more than, more than the feel good, like actual tangible, solid ideas, things that you're putting in practice today or have heard from other agents that they're doing. Uh, one of the most difficult things and, and actually the true need for this type of webinar, as, as you've seen on the, uh, the chats, is people are coming from very different situations, very different environments. Uh, their experiences, their challenges, their opportunities are completely different. So coming from your perspective, you've given a lot of great ideas and then also tried to reach out of your own backyard, your own perspective and give some ideas uh, that people can learn from. Uh, I think going forward with uh, additional agents that you're going to be interviewing on these Fridays will bring even more perspective from different parts of the world. Um, I want to tell you, I, I mean, First of all, thank you, thank you, thank you. I've, I've taken, um, now I'm at a page and a half of notes uh, to review just a couple of things that came to, to mind that I thought were really important is, you said now is the time to create turnkey solutions for our consumers. Um, and uh, managing, and probably more than that, managing the consumer expectation is everything in crisis mode. And I, and I wanna commend you for saying, you know what? I'm not sure I, these are some, some of these are, are scary questions. I don't have an answer for that. And I wanna address the fact that with uh, a lot of our agents who are trying, you know, those that are locked in, in their homes and don't feel like there's any uh, actual uh, business to transact, focus on the process and not the goal. And if the process is about uh, making sure that we are setting correct expectations for our consumers during this period of time, being sure that we are the, the subject matter experts and, and we're the ones that are leading them through this, it's okay not to have an answer. I think there are a lot of people out there who are afraid to pick up the phone and call consumers or connect because they're worried that somebody's going to ask them a question that they don't have an answer for right now. And That's that, in, in, in my opinion, is the best place to be. That authenticity, to be vulnerable, to say, you know what, I'm not sure, but we're going to figure out, you know, figure this out together. And I just want you to know I'm here for you. Instead of, you know, to your point of, and I will end here, is uh, lead, follow, or get out of the way. This is the opportunity to say, look, I'm, I'm, I'm leading, right? There are points in this conversation that I'm going to be following, but I want you to know that I'm not disappearing. I'm not, I'm not getting out of the way in the face of not having the right answer right now. I'm still here. I'm still connected. And when we get out of this, I'm your go-to. That's exactly right. Exactly right. And in fact, that's a powerful phone call for you to make. I call it the eat crow phone call. Two phone calls you can make that are powerful. Call somebody that you haven't talked to in a long time and say, you know what? I haven't talked to you forever and that's my bad. I'm sorry I haven't stayed connected. How are you doing? Second powerful phone call. Hey, right now my business is shut down and I'm spending a lot of time on phone calls. What questions do you have that I can't answer that I can go get answers on? <laughs> that's right. Great question. What questions do you have that I don't, I can't answer? I love that. Um, Kay Stokes, thank you so much. I'm um, so excited that we're going to see you consecutively over the next several Fridays, uh, interviewing some, some wonderful agents who are doing some really innovative things over the top. I uh, want to remind everybody that this is the place to, to be. Thank you, Kay, for reminding everybody. Noon Eastern time every Friday. Um, also, this webinar will be recorded. It will be put on Remax U. University on the webinar section. You will also find links on YouTube in a YouTube playlist as well as LinkedIn. Uh, until next time, have a wonderful day. See you guys. Stay safe.